All right, question number one. You find that the thin lens and mirror equation is kind of your go-to equation in this section. Question number one says, if an object is placed 12 centimeters in front of a concave mirror and the focal distance is given as four centimeters, what will be the magnification of the image? Is it real or virtual, upright or inverted? So first of all, let's just kind of put this out. So if we got the concave mirror, is your concave mirror converging or diverging? Okay, that's your converging mirror. So with it being the concave converging mirror, is the result the same no matter where the object is placed? No. It's the diverging ones that are always the same. Your diverging mirror is always a real, I'm sorry, is always a virtual upright image. It always appears small. All that little stuff, that's your security mirror, right? So, but your concave mirror, your converging mirror, it depends on which side of the focal distance you're on. Now in this case, the focal distance is given as four centimeters. What is the object distance given as? 12 centimeters. Cool, so at this point, we're beyond the focal distance. In fact, we're not only beyond the focal distance, what else are we beyond? We're beyond the radius of curvature. So because we're beyond the focal distance, what kind of image do we expect, first of all? And think about it, when you were, again, beyond the focal distance with the converging mirror, well, how did you look in the mirror? Upside down, good, so real and inverted. Great, and because we're also beyond the radius of curvature, what's gonna be true about the magnification? Yeah, we're gonna, the image is gonna appear smaller than the actual object. And so in this case, your magnification, we should expect the absolute value of it to be less than one. Now let me ask you a question, because this is inverted, what does that imply about the magnification? So, and that implies that your magnification is gonna come out negative. So with an inverted image, your magnification comes out negative. We'll find out because the image is real, that means our Q value here, our DI, if you will, should come out positive for a real image. Well, let's work out the math. So in this case, we've already figured out that it's real inverted. We've already got some qualitative things about the magnification, but let's do the math here. So in this case, your magnification is equal to the height of the image versus the height of the object. But notice, I don't really know anything about the height of the image or the object. So that's not really gonna help us, but it's also equal to the negative of the image distance over the object distance. Sweet. So in this case, my goal is to find those that I don't know using the thin mirror and lens equation. So in this case, we are 12 centimeters away. We've gotta do some math here. So note that your units here, we don't have to convert these all to meters. As long as these units all match, we can use any units we want to for length. In this case, I like centimeters. I would not want to do this in meters. So in this case, I'm gonna to have to do one over Q equals one over four minus one over 12. What's my common denominator? 12, and one over four is the same as three over 12, and three over 12 minus one over 12 is? two over 12, which is the same as one over six, which means Q equals six centimeters. Okay, so there's our image distance. Cool, and with our image distance being six centimeters, that's what kind of image again, being positive? Real. And being real, that makes it inverted, but it, this only tells us that it's real. Okay, so let's do our magnification equation now. So in this case, we're gonna get negative six centimeters over, what was our object distance? And what do we get for magnification? Negative one half. And again, the negative part means that it's inverted, so it's an inverted image, and the fact that it's less than one overall absolute value means that it's smaller. In this case, the image only appears to be half as big as the original object. Cool. All right, question number two, we're dealing with a diverging lens. So before we get into the specifics then, remind me of what you know to be true about a diverging lens. It's concave. So your diverging lens will be concave lens, great. What else is true? 
Do we always get the same kind of image or does it depend on where we place the object? Always be the same. Always be the same. And what is that image always going to be? So again, diverging lens means the rays are always going to diverge. And if the light rays are always diverging, they're never really going to converge on the same point. So you never get a real image. You only get the virtual image. And if it's virtual, it's going to be upright. OK, so we've answered a couple of the questions in this case. We already know it's going to be virtual and upright. But we want to know what is the magnification of the image. And we'll do that the same way we did number one here. So your magnification is negative q over p. And we'll use the thin mirror and lens equation. to figure out what Q is, so we can plug it into the magnification formula. So in this case, how far are, is the object placed from? 12. So there, 12 centimeters again. So one thing to note, your object distance is always going to be a positive number in this section. Technically, if you start using systems of mirrors or lenses, you might actually have the, you know, a virtual image as your object in the next one and stuff like this. And, and, and technically, you, you might end up with a negative number in one of those cases. But if you're just dealing with one lens or one mirror, your distance to your object is always a positive number. So 1 over 12 centimeters plus 1 over Q. And what's our focal distance? Good. Oh, it didn't say 4 centimeters in the question. It said the radius of curvature is 8. Good. It said the radius of curvature is 8 centimeters. So this is going to be 4 centimeters. But it's a diverging lens. So what's really true? For diverging lens or mirror, your focal distance is always negative. So a big common mistake here. So notice I gave you the radius of curvature is 8 centimeters because I wanted to make sure you could figure out that the focal distance was not positive 4 in the equation, but negative 4 centimeters in the equation. Cool. So if we do some math here, we get 1 over Q equals negative 1 over 4 centimeters minus 1 over 12 centimeters. And what's my common denominator again? 12. And 1 fourth is the same as 3 twelfths. Negative 3 twelfths minus 1 twelfth is? Negative 4 twelfths, which is negative 1 third. And so what's Q going to equal? Mm -hmm. Negative 3 centimeters. And again, the fact that Q is negative, what does that really mean again? that it's a virtual image. Cool. So if we plug this back into our magnification formula, we get the negative and then negative 3 centimeters over and 12 centimeters. And what does our magnification come out to be? 1 fourth. The fact that it's positive means what again? It's an upright image. So and the fact that it's less than 1 overall absolute value? Yeah, this thing's only going to be, the image is only one-fourth the size of the original object. All right, number three is dealing with a converging lens. So tell me what you know about a converging lens. Do the light rays converge with a converging lens? Yes. Maybe. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Yeah, depending on where the object is. So again, with a converging lens or mirror, I've got to know if I'm beyond the focal distance or within the focal distance. If I'm beyond the focal distance, the light rays really will converge. And so I'll get a real image. And being a real image, it'd be inverted. But if I'm closer than the focal distance that the object is, then what's true? Then the light rays won't really converge. I'll get a virtual image. And if it's virtual, it'll be upright. You know, that's kind of the deal here. So let's look at this here. With this converging lens of number three, we're told that the object is placed 10 centimeters from it. So P or DO is 10 centimeters. And we're told the focal distance is 5 centimeters. Now, is that going to be positive 5 or negative 5 in the equation? So for your converging lens or mirror, it's going to be positive 5. It's only for the diverging lens or mirror that it's negative for the focal distance. So that's still going to be plugging into the positive number in the equation. So but the question is, where will the image appear, i.e., what is Q? And will the image be real or virtual, upright or inverted? So in this case, are we placing this thing beyond the focal distance or within the focal distance? <clears throat> beyond. And since we're beyond the focal distance, what kind of image is that again? Real, and therefore, if you also notice, we've placed this thing at a very special point. 
right at the radius of curvature. Do you remember what we said about the, when you're right at the radius of curvature with a converging mirror lens? Same size. Yeah, the image will be the same size as the object. That's not the invisible point. The visible point is when you're at the focal distance, half the radius of curvature. But right at the radius of curvature, we said if you're beyond the focal distance, but closer than the radius of curvature, you, the image appears larger than the object. But if you're beyond the focal distance and beyond the radius of curvature, then your image appears smaller than the object. And when you're right at that radius of curvature, the image will be the same size as the object. But we'll prove that here shortly. Cool, what's my common denominator here? 10. Good. And so one over five is the same as two over 10. Two over 10 minus one over 10 is? One over 10. One over 10. And so Q simply equals 10 centimeters. And that was what the question actually asked. Now, if we went and found the magnification here, 10 over 10. yeah, we'd end up with negative 10 over 10. And the magnification would be negative one. The fact that it's negative one the negative part means it's inverted. inverted, what we already concluded. The fact that it's negative one means it's the same size as the object. Cool. Questions? So this takes work in just a flurry of problems to get this kind of stuff down with the magnification being plus or minus means, whether it's bigger or smaller than one, whether or not your image distance is positive or negative, being real versus virtual, all that kind of stuff. So but work a dozen or so problems and you'll have it forever, at least past your exam.